Okay, I'm gonna do this really off the cuff. I did, I did do something with my hair right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for asking for the moderators to introduce themselves because you're forcing me to do this. Thank you so much. I was gonna write something, and so instead of writing, everyone's doing videos. <laughs> And that's Johnny and Mitch say hi and, and tell them to shut up, please. Um, a little about me, my spiritual journey. I, at an early age, I, kind of, I knew I wasn't really earthbound or from earth. I remember before birth being in a green tiled room and um, the, a couple of funny things happened to me in, in real life. I was kidnapped in Germany by a nursemaid, a family nursemaid. Uh, she almost made it to Russia with me, and I would have been Russian if that had happened. <laughs> or but the MPs caught her before she could get, uh, she got very close to Berlin, got very close to the wall. But they got her before that could happen and brought me back home. Um, that was one of the first things that happened to me in, in my actual physical body when I was a young, young, like an infant, uh, infant toddler, you know, infant after post infant. I was in diapers. Anyway, um, after that, um, oh, these three things in succession. We moved to um, Fort Riley, to Kansas, which is so magical. With and, and that's the first my first encounter with really hanging out in the forest and tadpoles and fireflies. And I, I always find nature is an ecstatically spiritual experience more than any church. And I was raised Catholic. Uh, so that ritual pomp and circumstance of Catholicism is, is in itself interesting, um, not so much what's attached to it. Um, after that, I had a, an, a, a, a playmate who had, I think he was um, special ed, I, I think, what did you, uh, what do you call it? Um, Oh, he was missing a chromosome. Anyway, he hit me on my third eye when we were building something that was, you know, we shouldn't have had a, any hammers at the age of five-ish, but somehow we got a hold one, and he hit me in my third eye. He, I think he saw my third eye. And I, and I, and I, ever since then, I have this little mark here, my own little bendy, but not without injury. And... After that, my sisters used to hide me in the closet because they said my eyes glowed. And to this day, they will not admit my eyes did not glow. <laughs> and he, that's, I know that's ridiculous, but it's like, really? You hit me in the closet because you thought my eyes glowed? What is up with that? After that... I, I think my real first spiritual experience was this dream I had that was a really waking dream and every morning I'd wake up with a start because I was falling and falling and falling and this dream seemed to go on forever until one day I willed in the dream, one night in the dream I willed myself to fall and hit and I hit and something went away from me. I can't really describe what it was or anything, but I fell to earth. My my crown is itching. Fell to earth and um, impacted and so the next thing I remember is waking up one night and seeing a wolf in my window. My wolf spirit came to help me, to start guiding me. This is all around the age of five and six. After that, it was pretty much Catholic school and the whole trying to fit in. And the one thing I discovered is I loved art and I drew pretty well enough to win little 
prizes and stuff and um, just having a, a very rich creative uh, imagination that really helped me survive a very dysfunctional household um, that's another story in a whole different book which we won't go into so we're just talking about my spiritual journey right now and uh, those are the things that sustained me this great imagination this unwillingness to sort of attach myself to the, this reality which I felt was an illusion from the jump I just felt it I am a very feeling person I'm, a, I'm very empathetic and I do take on a lot of people's emotions and I am I'm always wanting to nurture and take care of people that's always been part of who I am in the world and um, I've understood this bardo this incarnation to be one of intense sort of non-attachment and so I can really identify with Buddhist ten ten tenets and read up a lot on Buddhism and sort of went oh yeah that's what I'm how I'm living in the world this is who this is what my life is this sort of non-attachment uh, to things I lose things I thought I was making progress I had this beautiful scarab necklace that I used to wear and it was something it had a feeling for me and and one day I mean I was taking careful care of it and, it, and then one day it was gone Another thing about me is my attachment to nature and I used to collect rocks and I didn't really understand the meaning of rocks and I would always look for the quartz but I didn't really know why I was looking for quartz. But I, I those are the ones I'd really go, oh, this is, and the colored rocks. Um, but I didn't know why. Then I started to learn about my chakras and my, and crystals and, and uh, the meaning of gemstones and, you know, various stones. Um, and all this pretty much, I sort of, <laughs> kept it kept me alive, it kept me thriving, it kept me from being suicidal. Because I don't, I never felt part of this world, I never felt like I belonged here, ever. And uh, so, being raised Catholic coming from my mother came from a Southern Baptist background out of out of South Carolina um, I could I couldn't once I found out what the Catholic Church had done and uh, to, to you know basically proliferate uh, colonize the South Americas and Africa and in their involvement I just you know I well, can't be Catholic and my mother's like you're going to hell and I say you know I can't, isn't this not hell? Isn't this, this seems like hell to me. You know, and, I, and I'm sure it is, a part in a way. But in a, in a deeper way, I knew that I've been sitting here, I've been sitting here for something to do. I'm on a mission here. I know that. And I don't really, the thing is, I don't really know what the mission is except for to stay in meditation and to anchor down light. Uh, those are the simple things that I'm doing and the other thing is to, to create a world where that is to clean, cleanse the world to cleanse the world and that's what I feel I'm here to do that's what my mission is in short um, and also to, to heal people through and, and I think my medium is creativity art so that's what I'm here to do I don't I don't feel I have a title I don't think um, that I'm channeling any, I don't channel anyone, i not actively channeling anyone uh, or anybody by name. I think we all have a value as far as our guides, our higher selves, uh, their identities are not the most important factors, but the gifts that we bring, that we give are. And I, I tend to like to think in non-egoic terms about what I am because labeling it and it gives it this sort of bizarre power that, that I don't think I want 
to be part of because that's also to me that's part of the darkness because it's part of what I'm trying to clean up around here you know in the most natural way possible to give Gaia back her full beauty and to help us to understand how to live upon this beautiful planet um, if we're going to live here and I mean you know and the rest of us I mean I, I understand we're just going to be some cleaning up going on so and then some who knows maybe we'll be taking off on ships so I've been talking for about 11 minutes I think that's more than enough of an intro um, I think I might have to do another one that's more like five minutes long for because <laughs> this is crazy nobody wants to know this much about me <laughs> Anyway, I'm this is nobody's probably going to see this video, but thank you for taking the time to watch my video. <laughs> it's been a pleasure getting to know you. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly 